Greetings everyone, this is Time Rider. You know, when I bought this casting at a flea market, I had absolutely no idea what it was. It just looked kind of cool, and I thought it would make a neat project someday, and then it promptly sat on the shelf for the better part of a year. When I finally dug it out and actually, I actually figured out what it was, I was kind of hooked. Not a huge fan of the Japanese car market, I was intrigued by this concept car that never made it into production. Introduced in 2003 at the Tokyo Car Show, the HSC, which stands for Honda Sports Concept, never got past this point. I don't know how many were made, but it might have only been one. It sported an all-aluminum frame, carbon fiber body panels, and a mid-mounted V6 engine. I'm glad Hot Wheels chose to immortalize it. I'm going to give it my best shot, so stick around. It was a nice casting. I kind of hated the Tampos, uh, and of course they have cheap wheels. Uh, Malaysian origin, uh, eh, like I say, kind of a neat little casting. Held together with uh, two rolled over posts, so we'll dr I always drill out the centers a little bit here uh, before I start taking it apart. Uh, it gives you a good center when you get it apart. And of course then I went up a little bit bigger drill bit uh, to grind off the top of that post. Boy, it sounds like I really started something, too. Uh, it sounds like Paul uh, over at Fat Guy is uh, redoing his bench. And then uh, I don't know how many of you follow Jim Silva, but uh, Jim Silva is uh, another gent similarly situated to myself and, and Paul in that he's uh, going to be retired and he's looking to expand his hobby a little bit. The window wasn't too bad, it was a little bit scratched up, and then there was an awful lot of flashing on the interior. And there was this hole in the bottom. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the bottom of the interior, because they apparently have a logo that they put through there. And then, uh, as you know, I like to make sure these are nice and smooth so I can put the thing back together easily. But anyway, if you have a chance, head over and take a look at what Jim Silva does. He, uh, he has a, a good talent for this, and... Uh, I'm guessing as his retirement becomes reality, here we go, back together, uh, he'll become uh, even more prolific than he already is. And now that I have a you know part of a pilot hole, I'll drill out uh, the two posts. Jim does a lot of our three blind mice builds. So I got uh, them all drilled out. We'll get my Anderson oiler here and uh, I can tap out these holes. Again, I'm you. I use a one uh, one sixteenth inch drill bit and a two dash fifty six tap. And no, there's no link below. You can get them on Amazon. And I put a button screw in it because, as I like to say, I gotta put it back together sometime. Huh. And then uh, out comes the primordial ooze. And in goes the Acura slash Honda concept car. shake for luck. When I started the project, I had this idea in my mind's eye of, of where I wanted to go with the project. And I was really fortunate because if you look at this casting, uh, the surface of the casting is, is uh, really well suited to being polished. I mean, if you look at it right there, look how smooth it is. And a lot of times, once you get the paint off, what you find is this horribly nicked and scratched and scuffed casting that is going to be almost impossible to polish naturally. You're going to have to do plating or whatever. And it isn't that I don't like plating. I just like it if I don't have to plate. 
And, you know, and I always go through the same processes. You know, I wire brush it, and then I, uh, I steel wool it, and then I polish it. And, you know, I do this over and over and over again, really. Hey, guess what? You know what the Acura logo is? It's a, a style. It's supposed to be an H that they folded the top on uh, to simulate a caliper. But it's supposed to be an A and an H, you know, Acura Honda. And now here I'm using sanding pads and I'm just, you know, I'll, I do this. Sometimes I'll sit and watch TV and do this. So I don't know how long I spend. Here I'm using that, that's a black polishing block. And uh, that's the more coarse. But I'll work my way through the blocks and... I'm not going to make a video where I show you step by step by step because it would take hours. But if you work hard enough at it, you know, you, you get yourself to something like this. You know, and this is where I'm going with it. This is where I wanted to go with it. You know, Spectraflame looks just beautiful on this kind of a surface. Hey, who's that old man there in that reflection? Hmm. Now, I'm using glass paint, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to paint it black. You know, I almost stopped right there and just started laying clear on it. But my hope was to have a translucent black, because there is no Spectraflame translucent black. And uh, this didn't work out as I had hoped, but it sure worked out in a manner I liked. And uh, this is one of those castings that has a, a spread on the wheels or 12 millimeter wheels on the back and 10 millimeter wheels on the front, which uh, really it kind of limits where you can, you know, you either have to get mismatched wheels or this guy, this is Treads. Um, he's on Facebook. But, you know, the, the wheels come from someplace in the Far East and they take about three weeks to get here. And... They're not bad wheels, don't get me wrong. I like I like the wheels. I ordered two sets because I have another project that has the same uh, need, uh, a split set. And they, I didn't want to cut them if I didn't have to. So uh, there was a little bit of work that needed to be done on the, on the uh, chassis. And then... Uh, I wanted to paint these seats a little differently, and I'll tell you what, I learned a lot doing this on how to how to do this. I wanted to try to create a racing seat, and this looks really pretty disgusting right now. But it, it turned out a lot better than this. Unfortunately, the windows are really dark and you can't see it. So anyway, now I get to tell a story. Um, you know, when I worked for the police department, one of the things I did was I provided oversight for the police fleet so when we would wreck a car like this one and we had to order a car to replace it uh ford always you know they would have a few on the lot because they you know order cars and they order a few extras because they know this kind of thing is going to happen so we called over to ford and we said yeah we need a crown vic and they said okay well the one we have is uh, black and white uh and as you can see our cars here are blue and white so we didn't care and then this showed up. Now, you know what happened is somebody wrote the wrong code in the wrong box and they got a whole bunch of spare cars that weren't really black and whites. They were more like white and blacks. So why am I telling you that? Well, some of you who follow me you know, more closely than others, I guess I'll say, saw this post on my community page uh, where I asked everybody uh, to pick a color. And I'm sure everybody figured I was talking about the color of the car. And that isn't what I was asking. I didn't really tell anybody that, but uh, the car was always going to be black. I had decided that a long time ago. And uh, a lot of people weighed in on what color they thought I should do for the accent. And uh, Anthony Bellini said pink and black. And I like that mix. So without dicking around, here's where I wound up. So there you go, Anthony, a black and pink. Uh, a couple things to note. 
Uh, that's a Spectre Flame hot pink, and what I did was just the rim portion, uh, leaving the spokes chrome. I thought it created a really neat effect. And then to do the taillights, I just used my chrome pen. Uh, you know, you dispense the ink out of it and put it on the end of a of a toothpick and just put a drop in there, let it dry, and then put red over the top of it. There'll be an episode of The Bench after the video here, so uh, thumb up, thumb down. If you're going to comment, please be respectful. This is Time Writer, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for hanging around for this edition of The Bench. Okay, a couple things that I'm working on. First of all, this uh, number 150 Dinky Rolls-Royce. And you can tell I've had this for a really, really long time. And I talked about it, I think, uh, once previously that I had painted it black. And I just was not impressed with how it looked. And I think what really bothered me about it is it needed more details. If you're going to do all black on one of these, I think you have to spend some time making sure that there's some chrome. Otherwise, it just looks like a black blob. Well, anyway, the paint's off of it, and I'll be redoing this. I'm not going to say what I'm doing with it. That's going to be a surprise. And then I also started working on this uh, number 31C, Suicide Door Lincoln. And I'm going to try to match this uh, metallic Lesney paint, which I never seem to get a handle on. But I'm going to give it a try again, and we'll see how it turns out. And then last but not least, uh, you know, I wanted to make a mention about the uh, Three Blind Mice build that we have coming up. Of course, uh, you know, Paul picked the casting and then he tore his bench apart. So it sounds like we're going to push the publish date back by seven days to uh, the 25th. And if you don't see, if you're going to do this and you don't see your name on the screen, uh, please be sure to let Paul know because he's the one that's kind of managing this build. So that's all I got for you. I hope everybody has a great weekend and uh, uh, see you at the next video. This is Time Writer. Everybody be safe. <laughs>